Thank you, Jesus. 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 When, when you continue to say thank you, Jesus, these words must agree with the meditation of your heart. The more you say thank you, Jesus, you don't just sing in your heart, thank you for my marriage. In your heart, thank you for my deliverance. In your heart, thank you for my healing. Thank you for my breakthrough. Thank you, Lord, for the light upon my family. Thank you, Lord, for the redemption. Thank you, Lord. You don't just sing. You continue to meditate. I think that's what the Bible says. We have read it in that book of Psalm. Psalm 19, verse 14. Let the words of my heart, let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be pleasing unto you. My strength, my redeemer. So when you say thank you, Jesus, in your heart, mean it. Don't just sing. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Master, we thank you. Savior, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, you are welcome once more in the arena of liberty. Where God is the one that reigns rule in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. People of God, many families, they face the same challenges. The reason behind that is because the cord that link them it is the blood and without the solution being brought to the same family there will continue to be the repetition of the same challenge that has been there in years from the Asian days. We will continue to see the same habit. Ah, this man, he reminds us our great uncle. He used to be like this. And we say, ah, this one they named him after a grandmother. You see the behavior is the same. Only to find that. This patterns, they are the same unless they can be broken. If no one comes and dedicates his life or her life unto God, the same pattern, we continue to see them in our families. Without you standing and fighting these patterns that are repeating themselves through the blood of Jesus and the power that is given unto you, your family will remain the same. The pattern will continue to be seen. I mean the same pattern. And many will think it's a coincidence. Ah, 
No, this is a coincidence. Even the doctors, they can tell you, this one is a chronic disease. This is a family thing. It's an inheritance. Ah, they are suffering from cancer. It's an inheritance. And you say, ah, they say it's an inheritance. The doctor has said this. We have inherited this from somewhere. Yet you are born again. And you can't question that. You are okay with it. The doctor told you that maybe there is someone who has been like this. You have a gene. This gene or what, what. This is the family thing. And you have accepted it. Yet you are born again. These patterns are there. But we mustn't accept them. Because we are given power and authority. Say, I'm given power and authority. These patterns, they are there. But we need to be aware of them and deal with them. This has led me to my message of today that I've entitled. Become aware of destructive patterns. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Become, aware Become aware of the destructive, of the destructive patterns. patterns. Hallelujah. Amen. We will read a few verses today. Hallelujah. Amen. I want us to read in the book of Genesis. Let us start Genesis chapter 12. Genesis is in Old Testament. The first book. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us start verse, uh, chapter 12, verse 10 to 15. And we'll go to Genesis chapter 26. We'll go back to Genesis chapter 11 and Genesis chapter 25. The Bible says, Genesis chapter 12, are you there? Amen. Verse 10 to 15, the Bible says, Now there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down to Egypt to dwell there, for the famine was severe in the land. And it, it came to pass when he was close to entering Egypt that he said to Sarai, his wife, Indeed, I know that you are a woman of beautiful continence. Therefore, it will happen when the Egyptians see you that they will say, This, his, this is his wife, and they will kill me, but they will let you live. Please say you are my sister, that it may be well with me. For your sake, and that I may live because of you. So it was when Abraham came into Egypt that the Egyptians saw the woman that she was very beautiful. The princess of Pharaoh also saw her and commended her to Pharaoh, and the woman was taken to Pharaoh's house. house. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go to 26. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Twenty-six. Let us read. I want us to read verse six to nine. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, "So Isaac dwelt in Gerar." Now remember, Isaac is a son of son of. I can hear you, son of. Isaac is the son of Abraham. Here now we are reading about Isaac. So Isaac dwelt in Gerar, and the men of the place asked about his wife. And he said, She is my sister. For he was afraid to say, She is my wife. Because he thought, Lest the men of the place kill me for Rebekah, because she is beautiful to behold. Now it came to pass when he had been there, a long time that Abimelech, king of Palestine, looked through a window and saw, and there was Isaac showing 
adamant to Rebekah, his wife. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Quite obvious, she is your wife. So how could you say she is my sister? Isaac said to him, Because I said, Lest I die on account of her. We see the same or familiar or similar story about Abraham and his son. Let us go to Genesis chapter 11. Chapter 11, I want us to read verse 27 to 29. Are you there? The Bible says, this is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, Nah, and Haran. Haran begot Lot, and Haran died before his father. Terah in his native land, in all of the Chaldeans. Then Abraham and Nah took wives. The name of Abraham's wife was Sarai, and the name of Noah's wife, Milcah, the daughter of Haran, the father of Milcah, and the father of Iscah. Verse 13, underline it. But Sarai was barren. She had no child. Did you underline it? This is the mother of Isaac, the wife of Abraham. Hallelujah. Amen. Do you agree with me? Amen. Lastly, let us go to the book of Genesis, chapter 25. Are you there? 25, let us start from verse 20. The Bible says, Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah as his wife, the daughter of the twelve, the Syrian of Padan Aram, the sister of Laban, the Syrian. Now Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was barren. And the Lord granted his plea and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Underline that. Isaac pleaded with the Lord for his wife because she was what? She was barren. This is Isaac. This is Abraham. Suffering the same thing. The destructive pattern. And we only see here solution. It was prayer. Because the Bible says Isaac he prayed unto God. He pleaded. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So, when you are at home, read the book of Titus, chapter 1, from verse 12 to 14. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because it will be included in our message. people of God. Like I said in the beginning, families are tied together by the court of the blood. And this makes it easy for the common occurrence. Many times, negativity in families. This is referred to as family pattern. Your father was a drunker and an alcoholic. Even the children, we end up saying, what can we say because they are like their father? Ah, this daughter, her mother was like this. Now it has become a norm. People, they are no longer even fighting and praying against that. Because they are used to the destructive pattern in the families. People of God, 
What do you observe in your life that you can trace to any of your family member? When you look at yourself, you look at your family that this has been done. We are born again, but this is a pattern. What is happening? There are some of the things that we must stop as a children of God to cut the pattern. Because some of the patterns they were born because of us. Say neighbor. neighbor. Some of the patterns sir, in our family sir, they were born because of us. Sir. The Bible says Abraham got to a city called Gerer. They tried taking his wife. So also God, Isaac, he got to that place. They tried to get his wife. This is the pattern we see. And you cannot say it was coincidence. Because when this was happening to Isaac, it was long time Abraham died. This has been died. Because a man was needed to pray. And you cannot say Abraham, he was Lord, the servant of God, the prophet of God. He was. Yet, the next generation, they needed to pray. Whether you can say your mother was born again, your father was born again. It has nothing to do with your prayer life. You yourself, you must pray. If you don't pray, some challenges, they will repeat themselves in your life. Say, Niba, we must pray. If we don't pray, some challenges will repeat themselves. People of God, Satan's intention is not to leave your generation. He fought your father. He attacked them with fornication. If you don't fight this fornication by living holy life, living for God, the pattern will repeat itself. The mission of the devil is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. If he wanted to destroy your forefathers, why will he leave you? Because it is his mission. This is why we will continue to see repetition, the same pattern. Because the mission of the devil is still the same. Say, neighbor, become aware of destructive patterns. This pattern, they continue to repeat themselves. Because the devil, he remained in the same mission to kill, to destroy, to steal. When you see divorce in your family, and the devil realized that I managed to cause divorce to your father, you think to you he will give up. He wants even your marriage to destroy it. That is why you will see the pattern now. It's becoming the same. This is the same reputation in the family. The same attack keeps on repeating itself. But one man or woman is needed. The woman of prayer. The woman of prayer. The man of prayer. The man of prayer. Abraham's wife was pardoned. Isaac's wife was buried. What is the meaning of this? Do you call this a coincidence? No. You can't say that. People of God, without us fighting in prayer, I've been telling you about the altar. I told you that families that get scattered because they don't have this what you call altar. We continue to see these patterns repeating themselves.
us uh, because there is no man to pray. In our families, certain things they repeat themselves because there are no prayer warriors, there are no watchmen in our families. If these things happen to a prophet, to the servant of God, by the name of Abraham, what are you? Isaac, the man who is to meditate, the person came, and in the same attack, I told you that this person they will continue to be there unless you pray, unless you dedicate your life unto Christ. These patterns, they are the attacks that has been initiated in your life, in your family. You must fight. Say, become aware of destructive patterns. You know, some of these patterns, we become too proud of them. You are too proud of alcohol. You don't see. This is the pattern that has been destroying this family. Satan knew I have managed to destroy their father, their grandfather, through alcohol. Look at you. The same pattern. I have managed to destroy the marriage of his grandmother, the marriage of the mother. The marriage now is getting destroyed. This is the same pattern. Where is the prayer warrior amongst them? Unless you become a prayer warrior and you fight, there is nothing you can do. Oh, men of God, oh, men of God, we are born again, so why are you talking about patterns? Why Jesus should give you power? Are you not aware you are given power and authority? What is that power for? Because there are certain things, there are certain snakes that you will have to fight, there are certain scorpions that you will have to fight, so that the same limitation doesn't come unto you, doesn't come to your generation. Why are you using the power without you committing yourself unto the Lord? We see these distracting patterns continuing to happen, even to those who call themselves the born again. And you say, why? I'm born of Christ. You are born of Christ. But are you living the right life? Are you committed to Christ? Oh, I remember. I became born again. The day you say you were born again is after you said, I accept you in my life. After that, you, you are not living for him. And you don't think the same reputation will come. Saying to those who are saying, I'm the church attender. I attend the church. You just attend, but you can't meditate. You can't dwell in the word of God. You can't be commune. Be one with the Lord. Then you expect everything to be okay. Say, ah, now I'm born again. Being born again, it must be a relationship with God. Being born again, you must become one with Christ. You must live like Christ. You must have Christ-like character. Then without having Christ-like character, what do you mean you are born again? The same pattern will continue to see it. People of God, when you read that book of Titus, I said read it chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, you realize the church in Christ was in display in confusion. And the apostle assigned Titus to go and put things in order. On his investigation, it was discovered that the church suffered from evil pity, family pity. This is in New Testament. He even said, even their prophets prophesied about these people. They continue to live their life of lie. You know a born again Christian who loves lie? Born again Christian who loves fornication? Born again Christian who cannot forgive? A born again Christian. You see this pattern. It continues. What, what is the meaning of this? Why this pattern? His family members were not forgiven. Even when they are born again, this, this church in Christ, this was the same thing. They were even prophesied that these ones they like to lie. 
some of these patterns that were introduced by us to our children. We make, we always lie before them and they begin to 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 to, to harbor or take the same character. The pattern now is that it. You have been drinking alcohol before you were born again. Before them, now they are enjoying. Where did this pattern start it from you? Now you are born again. A born again Christian is fornicating around. Hey, I'm a born again pastor. Yet you are fornicating around. You are starting a pattern that will be inherited by your fellow members. These are destructive patterns that must be broken. It has been normal even to churches that you can fornicate the way you like because this pattern has been introduced by some pastors. They will tell you that ah, pastors are also human beings. Ah, they can fornicate. They will fornicate but by fornicating as a pastor you are introducing a pattern to the church. By not forgiving you cannot enjoy the fruits of the salvation. The experience of the fruit of salvation, you will never enjoy it unless you deal with the destructive pattern. Say the bar. Become aware of destructive patterns. Say neighbor. Become aware of destructive patterns. Unless we deal with these patterns through prayer, there's no need for you to be given that power and authority to trample upon snakes and scorpions. These patterns are the snakes. They're the ones that are stealing our joy. <coughs> they will tell you that, look at him. He's born again. Yet he's drinking alcohol. Like us, we are not born again. Look at him. He's fornicating. Like us, we are not, we are not church goers. These are the patterns that are destructive. That you must deal with. Say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Say, give me strength, Lord. Give me strength, Lord. Don't just enjoy. Say, ah. You know, not better. You know, like it to be. And that I'm not saying I'm not to be. This pattern has been there. It has been there. You are given an option, even if you are born again. You are still have an op you still have an option to choose life or death. Death is a curse. It's not a blessing. You choose. Death in your career, you choose. But if you choose life, your prayer life must determine the life. It must be fueled by the word of God. Say, become aware of destructive patterns. These patterns, Satan introduced them so that the families will be destroyed. The whole family. He knows that this family, I will hold them with this. But if they don't pray, we know they can't break it. And you say, I'm born again. We must see the fruits. Prayer. It is one of the signs that you are born again. Communication with your God is the sign that you are born again. You must have a relationship with God. And the more you maintain this relationship, is the more patterns are getting broken. The more you continue to dwell in the word of God, you continue to become fire against the enemy. You become to break these destructive patterns in your life. If you can't, the same patterns will remain. It was not coincidence. Consider the life of David, child of God. David, remember, he slept with the wife of Uriah. 
Uri ya right? And what did he do? He killed Uriah, the husband. And the same case, it was introduced in his family. His sons, they began to do the same. Now in the family. The other one take the daughter. Kill the brother. And another one take the daughter, kill the other brother. In the family of David, was this a coincidence? This was the pattern that was introduced by David. The evil that he did, it was introduced in his family. The more we continue with the evil, is the more pattern is introduced in our generation. That this is how we do things here. Have you never seen people that are the religious people? Everything is a petty. Religious people, those who are worshipping ancestors, they will tell you, you got the job, you did not do this, you are in trouble. It's a petty. But you must be careful. I don't have a problem with patterns. But you must be aware of the destructive patterns. If you continue to pray at one o'clock, it's your pattern. One o'clock, three o'clock, I'll pray. Four o'clock. It's a pattern. It's not a problem because it's a good. A building up pattern. It's building your life. But these ones that are destructive. You know, in weekends, it's time to smoke with your friends. How oh, we smoke Dakha every Saturday. Now it's a pattern every Saturday. One day your children will be doing the same. You will never realize this pattern. I have introduced it. You must deal with it. Say, give me strength, Lord. Give me strength, Lord. To deal to with these destructive patterns. We do these things. Even pastors, fornication, around, fornicating, around. Tomorrow, one will say, ah, our man of God is doing it. We will do it. You have introduced the pattern in the church, the destructive pattern, sleeping around. Introduced the pattern that is destructive. Smoking around your children. Today they are smoking more. And they will smoke more than you. They will lie more than you. They will kill more than you. Because this pattern, unless we deal with this pattern, consider your family. God wants us to deal with these destructive patterns. He wants us to stand for our families and deal with these patterns that are repeating themselves. Say, so give me strength, Lord, give me strength, Lord, to deal with these patterns. Say, so give me strength, Lord, give me strength, Lord, to deal with these patterns. Give me strength, Lord. When you choose, you know, I will say as a man, as a me and my family, we shall work, we shall serve the Lord. It's a pattern. My family should know that. The man has introduced the pattern. In my family, my father was Sangoma. I left them. The pattern in my family was that we must worship ancestors. That was the pattern. I knew we must worship ancestors. It was introduced in our family. And it became the pattern. One day I decided that I won't fall under this pattern. This is a destructive pattern that I have been under. I used to send them to. But I must deal with this destructive pattern. One day my father said, Go home and go to the pata. 
wanted to put some incisors. I said, no, I can't. He said, now you are beginning to disobey me. He said, there's no way. Because I had to deal with the petty. That unless I stand in prayer and say no to sin, unless I stand in prayer and say no to Satan, unless I stand in prayer and I say no to sin, the pattern will continue even after me. My generation will carry on with the same pattern. I became aware of the destructive pattern that was in my family. Look at your family. Look at the departing that is destructive. And we must pray. Say, give me strength, Lord. Say, give me strength, Lord. Give me strength, Lord. Test things if we are not aware of. They will continue to repeat themselves. If we don't fight them, they will continue to repeat themselves. I said, even if it's a church, in a church, you'll find the pattern is the same. Members, they hate one another. After 10 years, you will see, even the new members, when they enter, they know the pattern. They must, they must have those group. I hate that group. Ah, I love this group. It's a pattern now. When was it it's introduced? When the church was beginning. That man of God loves this one, he hates this one. The pattern was introduced. These are the destructive patterns. If we don't deal with them, we will continue to say we are okay. If we don't deal with anger in our family, we will continue to say in our family, we are struggling from anger, yet we are born again. It's high time you say no to this pattern. It must stop here. It must end here. It has been there from our fathers. But now it's time it stop. Because it is distracting. It's a distracting pattern. Abraham. The pattern started. He lied. Ah, maybe they will kill me. Ah, maybe they will kill me. Let me lie to them. So that they don't kill me because of my wife. Yes, later on, the child, because the lie was introducing the petty. Later on, even the child, he did not know the same place. When that time, the area, they arrived at, that when you arrive at this area, it must begin to lie. They began to lie. They began to lie. And I don't think that Abraham told his son that, you know, one day I was afraid my son. I thought that they would kill me and take your mother. So I had to lie. You, you don't tell such things to your children. That hey, I was afraid that they was gonna kill me. But automatically it was happening to Isaac. He began to lie. When he, he met Abimelech, he had to lie. That this is my sister. His father said, This is my sister. His mother was buried. His wife is buried. Ah, what is happening now? And the Bible says he had to plead unto God for his wife. And the Bible says Isaac, he used to go by the night. At the night, later on, he will go and meditate in the field. This man he did not just plead unto the Lord. It's because he became the man of prayer. The man of meditation. For us to deal with these destructive patterns, we must deal with them through prayer, 
filling our lives with the word of God, without doubt, we will continue to be like the church in Christ. The church in Christ, they will live the life of fornication, the life of lie, this and this, yet they have been dead, and there was a prophet among them. Paul was surprised that they just go and check them. What is happening? And the report said, even their prophets prophesied about them. That these people, they live the life of lie. It has been a pattern that you should know when you meet these people, these are the kind of people that you meet. They have been lying all these years. They have been fornicating all these years. It's their daily bread. That is their lifestyle. It has been a pattern that was introduced, even in the church. Without being prayerful, without living the holy life, without living for God, without serving Jesus, the pattern will continue. We must serve Jesus. We must serve our master. We must continue to live the life of prayer. And the Bible says, do not cease to pray. Every time we cease to pray, the devil attacks with the pity. You see someone desire, begin to have that desire. Oh, I want to drink. Where does this come from? It has been there, my son. Oh, I cannot resist men. Where does this come from a born again sister? Because you are ceasing to pray. You are ceasing to dwell in the word of God. Yes, you are born again. But once you stop your connection with the, with, with Christ, the Messiah, the pattern starts. The devil, when he attacks, he attacks through a pattern. He knows that in this family, they have been destroyed by the alcohol. He will continue to hit in that family. So alcohol. That's why you see that many, when they leave their churches, leave Christ, abandon their salvation, they go back to what has been there in their family. The pattern. So, ah, oh, this father has been born again. Today is the Sangoma. They will tell you that, ah, oh, there are Sangomas in their family. After you break the connection, you go back to the pattern. But some of the patterns, we are the ones that are introducing them. When God says, choose between life and death, when we choose death, we are introducing the pattern in our families. When we choose life, we are introducing the pattern in our life. But the destructive pattern, it is when you choose death. Your children, they will only know that is how we do things here. When we grow up, we have been doing this in this family. This has been the pattern for years. If you can rediscover yourself and realize that I'm born again, I'm born of Christ, therefore I overcome the world, you will never overcome it if you cannot discover yourself that ah, I love Christ, I must break this pattern. This will never happen unto me. The pattern must be broken. You must become away of the destructive pattern. If we can't deal with them, please, I don't have a problem with what people are saying. Ah, oh, these things when you are born again, ah, oh, you are born again. These things, there are no generational cases. I've heard many saying that. Ah, oh, these cases, why are they still talking about cases? Listen to me. Even if they are saying they are not there, deal with them. Even if they are saying they are not there, because I've been seeing people who are saying they are born again, doing the same thing that those who are not born again do it. And I'm asking myself, what is the meaning of this? The pattern. Even if you hear many are saying, there is no such and such. There is nothing like this. After you have accepted Jesus Christ, there is nothing.
nothing like that. Play your role. Don't introduce destructive patterns that has been there in your family. Don't allow them. Because that is the meaning of salvation. You mustn't allow them. Or else they will take you out of salvation. You will never enjoy the fruit of salvation because of these patterns. That is why we have to deal with these destructive patterns. We have to be aware of them because they are there to steal the joy of salvation. Say neighbor. neighbor. The reason why we must become aware of these destructive patterns is because they steal the joy of salvation. You know when you are born again and then you are tormented by the last that has been tormenting your father. There is nothing you can do. You say, ah, he's born again. This destructive pattern needs to be dealt with. Without dealing with them, they will embarrass you. Say, he's born again, but look at the life. Opila, babo, pila. Opila, mpi. Yet you are born again. These patterns from your family has been there. Satan has been saying, This they must be the killers. Then you are into it to kill. During the day, you will come to church. During the night, you know, we'll go to our group. It's not your, it's a pattern that was introduced. Today, we must deal with them. And change our lives for better. Amen. Say, I'm aware, I'm aware of this destructive patterns in, in my family. I'm aware of this reputation of sicknesses in my family. Say, I'm aware of this reputation of anger issue in my family. Say, the end. In the name of Jesus, say the end has come. In the name of Jesus, once you are aware that so 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 and so has been having this challenge, now is the same thing. Ah, this is the same case. Look at it; they have been having cancer, cancer, cancer. Oh, after five years, there must be someone in the family. Oh, after six years, someone must die. In the family of six years. Or at the age of 40, almost everyone they get, they get accident. This has been repeating itself. You must look and say, ah, this has been repeating itself. It must stop. Because God is raising warriors. Say, I'm a soldier. I'm a, soldier. I'm a, warrior. I'm a warrior. This nonsense, this nonsense must stop. Must stop. If you can't be aware of these destructive patterns, you will fall in the pattern. They will continue to say, look at them. Like the church in Christ. Read it in the book of Titus. Go to chapter 1, verse 12, as I conclude. To 14. If we can't deal with them, they will deal with us. Can you hear me? Amen. If we can't deal with them, they will do what? They will deal with us. Are you there? Amen. What does it say, madam? Eringa how mema moti. Chapter 1, verse 12 to 14. One of the Creed's own prophets. Listen to that. One of the. One of the Creed's own prophets has said it. So, one of the Creed's, remember this, this is the church of Creed. One of the. Creed's are always liars. Creed's are always what? 
These are the prophets. This is the prophet who say these people are always liars. Yes. Evil boots. Huh? Evil boots. Yes. Lazy clutons. They are lazy clutons. This saying is true. This saying is true. Therefore, rebuke them. Therefore, rebuke them. Sharply. Sharply. So, after investigation, they have been realizing that this pattern has been there, even in this church. He realized that even the prophet, the prophet has been saying, these people in Crete, Cretans, they are liars. They are lazy Cretans. They will eat too much and become lazy. This has been the pattern. Why am I saying it has been the pattern? It's because someone, when he investigates, he realized that, no, they are repeating the same thing. That has been said even before. This a lazy church. This is a lazy church. These people are lazy to pray. They are always lying. They are always lazy to read the word. It has been there. It's a pattern. It must be broken. Amen. That's why Paul says, rebuke them sharply. Amen. Without you rebuking them sharply, the pattern in the church will remain the same. And these are the destructive patterns. They will continue to fornicate in the church. And they will say, I'm born again. So there's no test. They will continue to kill in the church. And they will say, ah, there's no test. You are introducing the pattern. It's called the curse. They have been lying, cretans. So he was supposed to rebuke them sharply. Because they had the pattern of becoming liars. They had this pattern of becoming deceivers. They will eat too much. They can't even fast. When you say fast to them, they won't because they are called critics. This was the pattern. But here is the church. He sent us to the church. This church, they had the same pattern of the outsiders. The same church. They had the same pattern of where they are coming from. If we don't deal with these things in our churches, in our families, the same pattern, it will happen. Say, have mercy on me, Lord. Lord Jesus, sir. Have mercy on me. Say, Master. Have mercy on me. In the name of Jesus Christ, sir. Say, I drink the blood of Jesus, sir. I eat the flesh of my master. Say, I apply the blood of Jesus, sir. Upon my family. Every pattern of life be broken. Every pattern of sickness be broken. Every pattern of failure be broken. Every pattern of paradise be broken. In the name of Jesus Christ. You must break them when you become aware of them. That this has been there. Pattern of lie. Pattern of deception. Pattern of killing. Pattern of sickness. It must be destroyed. Say, I apply the blood of Jesus, sir. I apply the blood of Jesus, sir. To break every destructive pattern in my marriage. Every destructive pattern in my career. In my family, in my ministry, be broken, be broken, be broken in Jesus' name. Say thank you, Jesus. Sir. Say thank you, Jesus. Sir. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. Clap your hands for Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You are blessed, people of God.